So hi, my name is Yannick. I work at Elastic, the company behind the open source product called Elasticsearch. I'm here today to tell you about our various uses of TLA Plus in the development of this product. So Elasticsearch is a distributed search analytics engine. It was initially released by Shai Ben in 2010 and has quickly gained popularity as a multi-purpose search engine that allows you to search any kind of data. It is based on Apache Lucene, which is an information retrieval library written in Java, created by duck cutting 20 years ago and still undergoing active and innovative development today. Elasticsearch is typically used for log analytics, full text search, operational and security intelligence, business analytics, metrics use cases, and more. So if you go on Stack Overflow, or if you search on GitHub or on Wikipedia, you're using Elasticsearch. If you have taken an Uber yesterday from the airport to your hotel, or if you're feeling lonely tonight and uh, you're looking for a date on Tinder, it's all powered by Elasticsearch. So I'm going to cherry pick a few key parts of the architecture here um, so that I can relate, relate to them later on in our TLA Plus story. And in contrast to typical talks about Elasticsearch, uh, I'm not going to focus so much on the search aspects of the system, but more on its distributed architecture. Data replication in Elasticsearch is based on the so-called partitioning or sharding model, which allows, uh, so which allows the cluster to uh, scale horizontally. So collection, a logical collection of data, which in Elasticsearch is called an index, is split into so-called shards, and these shards can then be allocated to different machines. Querying the index can then be done by these machines in parallel. Shards are also replicated, so we create additional copies of these shards, and replicas allow distributing reads. So you can just pick any of the copies for reading, as well as give you full tolerance. So if one of the nodes goes down, there's another copy available on one of the other nodes. In Elasticsearch, the number of shards is fixed at index creation time, whereas the number of replicas is dynamically adjustable. Data replication then happens at the per shard level. So for each shard, it's completely independent. Uh, and within a shard, it's also highly concurrent. One of the shard copies is called the primary. So that's your main copy of the data. And all other copies are called replicas. And writes always first go to the primary and are then in parallel replicated to all replicas. And these are already all the basics for data replication. Now at the cluster level, we have our clustering, a cluster coordination and metadata replication layer. So the metadata determines which indices are part of the cluster. So what are the logical collections and also what their schema is. It also contains information about which shard copies are allocated to which nodes. So essentially what we see here in this picture uh, and also contains information of the sub what the subset of shard copies are that are in sync. So those are the copies that contain the most recent writes, and only those can become primaries. Now, all this information is captured in an object that's called the cluster state. And this object is shared by and available on all nodes in the cluster. Um, this allows every node now in the cluster to smartly route requests, as well as coordinate searches, given that it knows where the different pieces of the data reside. The data replication layer now, which typically runs with two shard copies, relies on this metadata replication layer for correctness, so to identify the in-sync shard copies. But otherwise, the two are pretty independent. So to summarize, we have this metadata replication layer. It's low throughput, involves all nodes in the cluster, uh, and um, it only comes into play when you update your schema or when a no node drops out of the cluster and you need to reallocate your shard copy to a different node. And on the other hand, you have the data replication layer. That one is high throughput and it's far more targeted so only to those nodes um, that hold a copy of the specific shard. So with this architecture in mind, now let's dive into our story on how we came to use TLA Plus. So before I joined Elastic, I was working at a company that from a very early point on started to run very large Elasticsearch clusters. Uh, so in, uh, with version 1.3, which was released in 2014, we were running a 700 node cluster storing more than a petabyte of data. And while it was stunning to see Elasticsearch scale so well, there were a number of unique challenges uh, uh, with that. So there were situations where Elasticsearch could lose data, bo both caused by issues at, in, at the metadata as well as data replication layer. However, at that level of scale, storing the data in a secondary system for safety purposes is both very costly as well as impractical. And so as more users kept building these clusters with more and more demanding use cases, the resiliency for tolerance as well as scaling requirements kept increasing. And to address these concerns, the Elasticsearch team set out on a multi-year journey to improve the robustness and scalability of the system. Our first focus was on the data replication layer, which under some situations was losing data. It did not allow for quick recoveries when nodes were crashing, and it wasn't flexible enough to build newer envisioned features such as cross-cluster replication. 
Out of this was born the sequence number project, so an important internal project at Elastic to rework the data replication layer to uniquely identify each write operation in the system using a so-called sequence number, and also to generally improve the robustness of this system. We started off with an informal specification, essentially a deck of PowerPoint slides, from which we derived our implementation efforts. Um, uh, up to that point, we had been mostly relying on our CI infrastructure to put our code through a series of players monkey style tests, um, simulating various failures and then checking whether nothing went wrong. However, we were also looking at ways to complement this with formal methods. To this end, uh, a tweet by Peter Alvaro caught our attention. So Peter, head of the distributed systems research group at UC Santa Cruz, he was looking for collaboration on just this topic. And after a short exchange of tweets and a few follow-up calls between Peter and Boas, was at the time leading distributed group at Elastic, it was decided that Kamala, a PhD student in Peter's group, would join the team at Elastic for a few months over the summer to create a formal model and to validate it using Molly, a research prototype developed by Peter's group to find bugs in, distributed, in specifications of distributed systems. So the Molly checker works over specifications written in Daedalus, which is an extension of data lock, uh, and it outputs so-called Lampert diagrams or lineage graphs to visualize any problematic traces uh, that it finds. And while this formal model now did not uncover any issues in our informal specification, Kamal had validated at the end of the summer some of the known issues with our existing uh, old model, our old replication system, uh, providing evidence that such a formal approach would be fruitful. However, the main issue we had with that specific formal model was that it was already very complex and difficult to understand, even though it wasn't covering the full informal specification. And given that this was a research prototype, there were also some limitations in the tooling. So as a follow-up, investigated other techniques and tools to model this. And so at some point, stumbled upon TLA Plus, and I uh, immediately liked it, mainly because it was uh, great documentation and also excellent tooling. So within a week's time, I created the basic specification of our data replication model, which we then refined over the following months, and um, which I used as a basis to discuss the finer points of the algorithm with Boas, who had created the informal specification. Ultimately, this resulted in a TLA plus model of our new data replication algorithm that's been powering all Elastic search versions uh, since version 6, which was released in November 2017. So this new data replication algorithm, it identifies each operation using a sequence number, gives us quick recoveries, and has also served as a foundation to build newer features such as cross-cluster replication, which was also released end of last year. So our specification contains 860 lines of commented TLA plus code, and it checks the safety properties such that even in the presence of network partitions, no crashes, that all acknowledged writes are properly stored on all instinct shard copies, and that all instinct shard copies are properly aligned once the system is again in a stable state. So this was our first specification, a TLA plus specification for Elasticsearch. Our next use of TLA plus was in a much different setting. So we studied two bugs in a highly concurrent component at the shard level. Fixing these bugs was tricky given how complex the implementation already was. Uh, and so we had many discussions around these bug fixes and uh, various safety arguments for them. And so at some point, we decided to take a step back and make use of TLA plus <coughs> before proceeding with our bug fix. So we took the existing Java implementation, we mapped it onto a plus code specification, then used the TLC model checker uh, to validate presence of these two bugs. This also led us to discover an additional unknown bug uh, in implementation, which we only later observed in the wild. A similar, more recent example of this is where our testing infrastructure uncovered a bug which only surfaced after running for months uh, on CI. And again, took the same approach, we took the Java-based implementation, this time mapped it onto a TLA plus specification, and the TLC model checker again was able to find the bug within seconds. So in all these cases, our bug fixes were always first prototyped in our TLA plus or our plus call specification, um, and then validate with the model checker before proceeding of putting uh, the bug fix into uh, in our production system. This more recent use of TLA plus was also a great learning opportunity for somebody new on the team um, to extract model from the code and uh, yeah, get familiar with TLA plus. The last more detailed use of TLA plus I would like to showcase uh, is one where we've taken a formal design first approach. So, um, we designed a new cluster coordination subsystem, so the thing that's responsible for the clustering as well as metadata replication, and we validated it with TLA plus before starting off our implementation efforts. The cluster coordination subsystem works by selecting one of the nodes in the cluster to be the master. And this elected master now has to make sure that all the nodes in the cluster receive updates to the cluster state. 
This is harder than it might first sound because distributed systems like Elasticsearch must be prepared to deal with many strange situations. So nodes can sometimes run slowly. They can experience long garbage collection because it's written in Java. Um, there can be power outage, right? Networks are also unreliable. unreliable. So you can have uh, network partitions. You can have periods of high latency, packet loss. Messages might arrive in different order in which they were sent. And all these kind of things can happen all at once in any kind of strange combinations. Nevertheless, the system must make sure that every node has a somewhat consistent view of this cluster state. Additionally, Elasticsearch must be resilient to the failures of individual nodes. And it achieves this by requiring cluster state updates to only be successful after they've been accepted by a quorum of nodes. So a quorum is a carefully chosen subset of the nodes in the cluster. And the advantage of only requiring a quorum of nodes to successfully respond is then that uh, individual nodes can fail without impacting the overall cluster's availability. Quorums must also be carefully chosen so that the cluster cannot um, um, uh, elect two independent masters that are making inconsistent decisions, as that, again, can lead to data loss. Elasticsearch version 6 and earlier used a cluster coordination subsystem which was called Zen Discovery. And this subsystem successfully powers clusters both small and large. However, there were some issues with it uh, that we wanted to address. First of all, the quorum size was uh, defined using a user configurable setting, which was called minimum master nodes. And it was therefore vitally important to cor correctly configure this on every node in the cluster and to adapt it as you kept adding or removing certain types of nodes. Failing to do so brought the risk of a so-called split brain situation, having two independent masters making inconsistent decisions, ultimately leading to data loss. Then Discovery had also a rare failure mode where under certain situations um, it could lose cluster state updates, and that was something that was far more fundamental to the actual algorithm being used. So for Elasticsearch 7, we completely redesigned this uh, uh, cluster coordination subsystem and, and also completely re-implemented it. First of all, we got rid of the minimum master node setting uh, in favor of having Elasticsearch itself determine which nodes can form a quorum. And this makes uh, growing in clusters much safer and easier as uh, the, the system can now automatically and safely uh, adapt the quorums as need be. If you're familiar with uh, the theory of distributed systems, then you may recognize cluster coordination as an example of a problem that can be solved using distributed consensus. Implementing distributed consensus was not as widely understood when development of Elasticsearch started, but I'd say much has changed since then. So <coughs> redesigning this cluster coordination subsystem gave us the opportunity uh, to follow the theoretical models much more closely. So if you're familiar with distributed consensus algorithms such as Paxos, Raft, ViewStep Replication, Zap, then much of what we've done will look very familiar to you. Noteworthy here is that we separated out the safety bits from the liveness bits of the algorithm. And so our TLA plus specification only covers the safety bits. It models a single rewritable register which contains the cluster state. Uh, and besides typical parts of a, class of a core consensus algorithm, it additionally also models dynamic reconfiguration, which is about adapting the chromes as you're growing or shrinking a cluster, as well as cluster bootstrapping, which is about putting the initial chromes into place. Uh, and all of these are highly important as they contribute to the safety of the systems, making sure that it, uh, that it correctly behaves under all adverse conditions. Now, the TLA plus specification on which we checked our safety properties has been mapped onto uh, a Java class. And as you can see in the snippets on the slide here, our Java implementation on the right-hand side looks very similar to the TLA plus code on the left-hand side. So if you look at an example here on the left-hand side in the TL plus specification, we require for this rule to trigger, we try to be in a state where we have won the election. Again, this is mapped onto a check in our Java implementation, which says if election one is false, we throw an exception. Similarly, our spec requires uh, for the terms to be matching, which is, which is again mapped onto a check in our implementation, which says if terms are not matching, we throw an exception. And so you can, on, for every sub-expression on the left-hand side, you can find a statement on the right-hand side. And so it's pretty much a very straightforward translation from TLA plus code to Java implementation. Right. Um, so wh one important thing that we made in our implementation is to uh, make sure that every, uh, every, um, whenever Elasticsearch accesses the relevant state in implementation, it is, all that access is threaded through this Java class, essentially making sure that our system is correct by design. Or it also means that the specification is now written at a different level of abstraction as, for example, let's see Lampert has done for the Paxos spec. So this is much closer to how you would code it up than a high-level descriptive spec of a consensus algorithm. Finally, um, 
given that we did not envision to see many changes in this implementation, we just opted here for manual transpilation from TLA plus code uh, to Java. And um, you see the sizes of TLA plus specification as well as the Java code. So it's, it's pretty low, so it's pretty easy to review that these two are uh, aligned. Right. Well, let's go back. So uh, the TLA plus specification and the Java implementation that I've shown you is what's been powering all Elasticsearch versions since uh, version 7. Uh, which was released in April this year. And if you want to learn a bit more about that specific use case, there's a detailed blog post about this. I would also like to present a few lessons learned here. So I showcase various uses of TLA plus, uh, plus Gull, as well as the TLC model checker, which all have extensively contributed towards creating a much safer and resilient system. We've used different levels of abstraction for specifications, so sometimes closer to the code, and sometimes more of these high-level descriptive specs. So you should use whatever feels right for your specific purpose. In particular, think long and hard what should be in the spec as well as what should not be in the spec. Dealing with state space explosion is always tricky, and I think we use many tricks in the book there, like um, symmetry sets, state constraints, where we try to make sure that we cover an interesting enough part of the state space, while also making sure that our model checker run terminates within a day or so. Uh, in particular, we've made use of coverage information to influence our state constraints, but in general, we'd like to be a bit more methodical about this. Uh, currently, this relies very much on having like, a good understanding of the problem domain. Um, for example, for distributed consensus algorithms, it's often said that uh, using a model checker configuration with three nodes helps you find uh, most of the bugs. Well, in some cases, you might require five nodes um, to, to find uh, some of the more uh, special conditions. In our case, for our TLA plus model, given that we had dynamic reconfiguration, most of our bugs we found actually only with two nodes. So it's all very con uh, context dependent. Yeah, the TLA plus toolbox uh, is, is very convenient to use and we're very happy with it and always super excited whenever there's new improvements there, whether it's additional coverage information or uh, whether it's about visualizing traces. So we had some minor issues with putting um, TLA plus specification on the version control, figuring out which files to exclude, separating um, source code from generated code, separating specification for model checker configuration, separating, uh, and then also some of the issues with uh, model checker configurations containing machine local information such as IP addresses. So separating these things a bit more clearly I think might help on the collaborative aspect. The TLC model checker, well it's great at finding bugs and um, yeah, using a model check instead of formal proofs, which we actually also work with for the cluster coordination project, um, gave us, give us, us at least for our current projects the right trade-off between effort spent on validating specs and the benefits we get from them. So what's the future holding for us? Well, we would like to see in which other places we can make use of TLA+, Plus, as so far it's been exclusively used by the distributed subteam at Elastic. The main reason probably is that um, Elastic is, uh, that TLA+, Plus is such a natural fit for distributed and concurrent issues. So if you'd like to see some of these TLA, TLA Plus specifications that I talked about for yourself, all of them are publicly available on our GitHub repository, just as well as the, uh, as, as the, the, the code of the, system, uh, of, 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 the, of the system that we're actually modeling. So if you want to learn more about the specs as well as the relevant production code, please do have a look. Thank you. Great. Questions? When you've been onboarding new, um, new developers, and clearly some of your specs are quite large, um, and if they're new to TLA plus or plus cal or whatever the specs written in, um, have, has it been useful for them to start out with smaller problems that aren't necessarily even part of the spec proper, or do you usually just have them jump in in a smaller scoped aspect, or how have you been approaching that? Right, so the most recent use of TLA plus was actually one where we, we had a new developer um, just well, we found a bug in, in some of our systems through CI testing, and then um, yeah, we, we asked, well, it was actually the developer himself that said, well, maybe it might be a good idea to model this using TLA+, and so it was for him a great learning opportunity to, to just do that, essentially extract the model from the code, because working with TLA+, is not only about TLA+, the language, but it's also about how do I create a proper model, right? What's a good specification for, for a certain part of the system? And I think that was perhaps the biggest learning opportunity there. Uh, going ahead and, 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 and well, extracting an, uh, or figuring out what the model is from the existing code. And so that might be a good, uh, a good first step, essentially taking something that's already there and then properly conceptualizing it in, 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 in terms of a TLA plus specification and then using, playing with the model checker to, to, to either figure out existing bugs or, or to rule out such bugs. 
And that area of the code hadn't been spec'd before? So no. it was all green field yes, for yes, that? Okay. Yes, yes. But it was like, uh, it was, uh, let's say, it was a very targeted thing. So it was, uh, it was in this case, it was, uh, it related to uh, the, the atomic persistence of our cluster state. And so it was really at the storage layer, like, uh, uh, it was, I don't know, it was maybe 500 lines of code class or something like that, and the core algorithm was much smaller. It was something, I think that the actual TLA plus model for that was maybe two, two pages or so. So it was pretty contained. Next question. Hi. Um, you said you uh, modeled liveness properties in a separate layer on top. Could you talk just a tiny bit about that? Oh, so we did not model liveness properties okay. using TLA+. Plus. So we checked liveness properties extensively using testing. Okay. Yeah. I can go more into that, but it's, it's a whole different subject. Uh, yeah. Maybe we take that offline. <laughs> Next one. Otherwise, I have one. Um, so you said you specified some bits of your system and Pascal and other parts and TLA plus. What's the story there? It's essentially a developer's preference. <laughs> so okay. I prefer TLA plus, and so when I created the initial spec, um, uh, I went with TLA plus. Um, then, um, well, I think for whenever you're reverse modeling existing code, in some places it might be more convenient to do it with Pascal, uh, especially if you have very complex flows. Um, but um, yeah, I think oftentimes, I would say oftentimes, it's mostly just about personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, and is it so that newbies to TLA Plus prefer to start with Pascal, or is it in your company no? I don't think so, actually. I, I found that, at least in our company, that uh, people find, or many people find uh, TLA Plus easier to read. It's a simpler, a simpler model, simple semantics, or very simple semantics. Whereas if you use Pascal, you have this additional, like this additional layer of complexity on top of it, and you still need to s at least have a, a decent understanding of, 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 of TLA Plus anyway. So it's, uh, it's just adding things on top of, of mm -hmm. another thing. Yeah. Okay. More questions? I would be interested in knowing, like, uh, what's the, in, in the audience here, what's the general preference for, for Pascal versus TLA plus? Maybe who has used mostly Pascal, for example? Yeah, quick show of hands. Who uses Pascal regularly? Okay. Who uses TLA plus regularly? Who uses Alloy? <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> well, with that, then thanks again. Thank you.